Hello everyone, and welcome to the 133rd episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring Big Jack Horner from Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Now, if you've seen this film, you'll know that Jack and the ethical bug do quite a good job of analyzing Jack's evil within the film. But regardless, you've all asked for it, and I've brought a few things to contribute to their findings. Jack is a horrific creature, an overgrown baby seeking ultimate power for his own sake at the expense of all who happen to get in his way. In this video, we're going to run through all of Jack's horrid exploits and deconstruct what little personality he has, giving you all the sordid details of how a boy handed everything can turn into a man who will do anything to possess the one thing he doesn't have. Now without further ado, let's begin. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner, eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I. This is the nursery rhyme that Jack Horner is based off of, and although it's slightly different in the film and used for a different purpose, the meaning behind the original rhyme is quite prevalent to the character we see in this film. It's disputed as to whether or not this is true, but I'm going to read the supposed origin of this rhyme that you can find on education.com. The story behind this rhyme is that Jack is actually Thomas Horner, a steward to the abbot of Glastonbury. The abbot sent Horner to London with a Christmas pie for King Henry VIII. The deeds to 12 manor houses were hidden in the pie, the abbot did this in an attempt to ingratiate himself with the king during the dissolution of the monasteries. On his trip to London, Horner put his finger in the pie and pulled out the deed to Mel's manor. Shortly thereafter, Horner moved into the manor. His descendants have lived in the manor house for generations. Horner's descendants dispute this story and claim that Horner fairly purchased the property from the king. So essentially, this nursery rhyme is used to denote someone who is greedy, and it's been used to that effect since its inception in several different ways. Greed couldn't be a more apt sin to accuse Big Jack Horner of, and the original rhyme he's based off of is quite fitting. However, the film's version is used as more of a company slogan for Horner's pies, the cute little buttered up baker's boy doing his song and dance to help his parents sell their pies. Now Jack's relegation as this company mascot in his youth hampered his development, and it caused him to form an inferiority complex. And this complex greatly affects Jack's personality in two distinct ways. Because he was called little all of his young life, as an adult, he's ensured that he's now Big Jack Horner, a powerful man that no one can cross without losing a couple vitals, especially if they dare to refer to him as Little Jack Horner. And Jack appears to rule as a tyrant in whatever town his factory lies in, a town that looks grim and choked in smoke as it languishes in the presence of Jack's dark palace of seedy business. Now, while Jack being referred to as Little basically guaranteed that he developed some sort of insecurities in one way or another, and it helped shape him into quite the nasty fellow, the other component of his inferiority complex is much more problematic. As a person who's close to, but not quite a fairy tale character, Jack watched as all the other fantastic creatures and people that surrounded him gained fame and recognition due to their unique attributes and magical abilities. Jack, though he had his very own nursery rhyme, was often ignored in favor of these more captivating creatures. As what's more interesting, a talking puppet, or an overweight boy with a purple hair and a purple thumb. More often than not, it's the puppet. So Jack felt maligned in the presence of these more attractive entities, and because he envied their fame and power, his chief desire in life became the acquisition of magical power, and not just some magical power, but all the magical power in the world. Aside from his inferiority complex, his upbringing also contributed to the formation of this desire. Jack says that he had two loving parents, stability, a mansion, and a thriving baked goods enterprise to inherit. That wouldn't seem like circumstances that could turn someone into the kind of man Jack Horner is, but what we can assume from all this positivity is that Jack was spoiled rotten, and because he was handed everything in life and wanted for nothing, he was thoroughly ungrateful, as he believed that's just how things should be, and whatever Jack Horner didn't have, he wanted, no matter what it was and whether it was useful to him or not. And so, this greedy, spoiled, and envious child developed into a man who collected all magical things with a shocking carelessness and ignorance. He seems to hold all, if not most, magical items that ever existed, and he's no more careful with them than a child throwing one toy over his shoulder in favor of the next. Baby unicorn horns, the Lilliputians from Gulliver's Travels stuck in a bottle, Excalibur still in its stone, the Wicked Witch's crystal ball, a phoenix used as a flamethrower, Jack is a personal and environmental hazard that would see all things wondrous and whimsical in his world held in his possession, but he doesn't even covet them for their beauty or magnificence. It's for their power, and he's that same spoiled little boy taking all for himself just so he can say that he has them. That isn't to say that Jack is little physically though, quite the opposite. 
He's a massive individual with massively disproportionate features, and his gangly arms, gargantuan hands, enormous frame, and baby face all serve to not exactly terrify us, but definitely set us on edge. His appearance is nothing compared to his poisonous personality, though, and he proves that he's every bit the irredeemable monster on the inside that Mr. Ethical Bug claims he is. He's callous, cruel, unempathetic, and brutal, caring little for anyone close to him, and using people's lives as one might use a hammer to pound nails. In this story, we see him employing a pair of sisters who conducted many murders to acquire the star map for him, sending his minions to the grinder as they attempt to clear a path for him in the pocket full of posies, shooting haphazardly with no care for the safety of his employees, killing several of them in a puff of confetti using baby unicorn horns, and he uses his remaining henchmen as a human bridge so he might cross a ravine, forcing them to bear the load of his caravan, which sends all but one of them hurtling to their death. What makes matters worse is that while he's committing all of these atrocities, Jack is cracking jokes and treating everyone he harms as useful fodder for his ambitions, and he has not an ounce of remorse in his body for the misery he's caused to anyone who dares to get close to him. What's even worse than that, though, is that Jack enjoys his barbarity. He's so twisted and sadistic that he even revels in the idea of being called death, a job that he would no doubt carry out with glee if it happened to fall into his lap. Despite all that he is, and all that he's done, all the misery that Jack has caused over the course of his life would be nothing compared to the horror that would have been unleashed should he have gotten his wish. If the glimpse into his crystal ball is any indication, the very world itself would have crumbled under the weight of Big Jack Horner the Warlock, a man with zero empathy, limitless greed, and the power of a god. All that stood before him would be turned to his use, or crumble in the wake of his godly powers, and the world as we know it would become the playground for an overgrown child with not a shred of mercy. But thankfully, Big Jack Horner is stopped, and the horror that was the cute little butterball turned monster was sent thumbing down to the depths of hell, and his reign of terror was ended. And at this end, who was Big Jack Horner? He was a boy who had everything, one who turned to the only thing he could never have, and coveted it as his by right, like all things in the world were. Jealous, cruel, sadistic, and megalomaniacal, little Jack Horner became one big threat, a beast poised to destroy the world through greed, petulance, and ignorance. A beast who has not an ounce of redeeming qualities within him, and a man who's made of nothing more than pure, concentrated evil. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Jack? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below, and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured while you're at it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. A big thank you to all of my subscribers, to my patrons, and anyone who's decided to honor me with a super thank, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server and Reddit to interact with myself and the community, and follow me on the social media platforms listed below to keep up with the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.